Hi, and welcome to the first episode of Season 10 of ECCB Connects. To kick off this season, we focus on one of our region's up-and-coming information technology gurus who is shining brightly in the ECCB Bright Sparks program. Stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Thanks for staying connected with us. The Eastern Caribbean Central Bank initiated its Bright Sparks program in 2018 to provide students pursuing studies in information technology the opportunity to gain first-hand experience in an IT working environment. This all-expenses-paid internship also allows students to demonstrate their skills through the development of applications. For the Bright Sparks program, we kind of conceptualize to give young people the opportunity to work in an environment out of the school, in a commercial environment, if you will. Uh, our MIS department has top class uh, persons as well as equipment, and we do a lot of first class work here. So we wanted to share what we do here with young persons uh, to see if they can grasp the opportunity to further their skills in information technology. The reason being is that inf information technology is going to be part of the new economy. Um, every, everything that we say and we do uh, involves the use of information technology. And sometimes what we don't do is encourage our young persons who have the inclination towards information technology to be in an environment that helps them and nurtures them to build on those skills. We are particularly interested in programming skills. While a keen interest in information technology and programming skills are key criteria, they are not the only requirements for the ECCB Bright Sparks program. Students who wish to be part of the program must possess a positive attitude and be willing to devote their time and effort. A Bright Spark is not necessarily the student or the students with the highest grade, but it is also, it's a combination of factors. It is um, one who's willing to learn, um, one who's willing to work hard, and one who's willing to put in the time to get the work done. A Bright Spark should al also have a very positive attitude um, towards the work. Um, must be open to new technologies because like we know we have the fintech project um, happening now um, must be must be um, willing and ready to do lots of research because we know the fintech project is a uh, is um, is brand new technology and finally just come willing to shine the eccb bright sparks program is open to community college students in the eight eccb member countries but how does the ECCB identify and select its bright sparks? So the way that we initiate our scouting programs is that we look around for uh, our community colleges to hold fairs uh, for, the internet, for the information technology program. And then we will send one of our officers to these fairs to assess the programs and the developments that the young ones get involved in. So while they portray their skills, we look for individuals who may just be above the top, so to speak, the cream of the crop. And these are the individuals that we're looking for. When we go to, to the fairs, um, they, the, the students form groups, they present their projects, and that's where we we, 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 we go in and we ask certain questions. We ask every member of the group the same question. And uh, well, of course, we leave St. Kitts with the type of person we have in mind. And we go down, we ask the questions, and we ask the most importantly, we ask each member what's the contribution to the, um, to the project that they are presenting. And, uh, and outside of that, then the decision is made. Um, ask all of them the same questions, we call it, 
And then at the end, um, we speak to the, the IT teacher so that together we can make a decision as to who is the best person um, to get this opportunity. Community colleges in the ECCB member countries play a key role in the ECCB Brightspark selection process and are therefore encouraged to take the necessary steps to increase their students' chances of being selected. When we made the, 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 the phone calls to the different phone calls to the colleges, um, not all colleges were, were ready. Some colleges did not even have the actual program where um, the, the projects are displayed to the public, so basically that's an opportunity lost. So basically to the college, so try to formulate uh, some kind of um, program where the public can actually come in to see what the, what the students can do, um, let them present their, um, their projects, and so the, the, um, the public can actually look and maybe even be, Im be impressed, and that's where we come in. Um, at that point, we, we will be there, of course, by, by invitation, and we will, and when we come in, we will ask the different, the various questions, and, um, and, and we, will make, we will make an assessment from there. Um, but the student also must be bright spark, yes, to actually be eligible for that opportunity. Lyndon Jackasol, graduate of the T.A. Marishaw Community College in Grenada, was selected as this year's ECCB Bright Spark. He holds an associate's degree in information technology and wants to deepen his knowledge in this field. But what set Lyndon apart? What made him shine brighter than the other potential Bright Sparks? In Lyndon's group, he, he was the developer. And lucky enough that that was um, one of the persons we were looking for. We were looking for a developer. And in all the groups, he stood out because he basically um, confidently answered all the questions and he programmed, he programmed the entire application that they, that they presented. And when he was asked about um, how much research he actually put in and, and, and the amount of research and sleepless nights he put in, that was, was, was partly made him the best, the best candidate. And his project was a very good one as well. If I can remember, it was it was an app um, they built, which was which was a, which, which seems to be quite useful. As a young child growing up, I was very curious, and I loved the process of of um, just finding out how these um, technical systems work and. Um, mm -hmm. And how I can use it to solve other problems, um, other problems as well as problems of only something that I like, and um, and so the um, interest in IT grew, and it has been growing ever since. How did you feel when you found out that you were selected to participate in the Bright Sparks program? When I heard I was selected to participate in this program, I was really happy and grateful at it. Um, at the same time. I was really excited to um, travel to St. Kitts for the first time and to meet the various teams here at the ECCB and of course to um, begin an extraordinary learning experience. What has been an extraordinary learning experience for me so far? What were your expectations coming in? What were you hoping to achieve with this internship? I expected a high level of professionalism from the staff here and I expected to learn a lot to expand my knowledge in IT and, um, and also to improve my work ethics and professionalism within, um, within the work environment. So I really expected to, um, to develop myself as an individual and to just keep on working hard and be the best that I can be. Were those expectations met you here at the ECCB? Of course, yes, those expectations were exceeded, of, um, as a matter of fact, you know. Um, I worked long hours, um, well, me and the team worked long hours in, um, in um, developing this application, what, um, which was my main project and my main focus here. And it really helped me in understanding a lot of, well, uh, well a lot about IT as a whole. And um, actually interacting with um, the various members in the bank staff. It, um, it increased my confidence because coming here I was really shy and so on. Mm -hmm. I could say um, from the moment I started, I have grown as an individual. So um, the experience was really... It's been good. It, it's been good.
Lyndon, you mentioned you were working on a project. Tell us more about that. What was that project about? Yes, so that project was um, the development of an application used to automatically um, extract, calculate, and disseminate rates using various business intelligence tools. What were the lessons learned from being involved in a project of this magnitude? Well, starting out with this project, um, it was really challenging um, getting the user requirements and so on from the users in order to develop the, um, the application. And, um, but I've learned um, how to, well, I've developed my persistence skills. I'm a very huge believer of um, persistence and um, that is one of the quality that I have developed while working on this project. And, um, and as well, um, the team worked with me in order to get this project completed and um, fully functional. And we worked really um, hard on hard in getting it stable and um, putting all the requirements together. So completing it has been quite the achievement. Yes, it has been. Excellent. Congratulations. <laughs> We, we all um, welcomed um, Lyndon in the department, um, all of us. Um, he seems to be quite happy to be here. And uh, he's done, his work has been phenomenal. Um, he's actually helped us in, in, in many areas. But his, his specialty is development. And he's made it quite clear that that's, that's what he wants to do, that's where he wants to go. So he's attached to the applications and maintenance unit of MISD. He has developed an application that is going to be used by our banking and monetary operations department. And the folks in Beamwood are thrilled that someone could take some time and develop a program that they can use in their day-to-day -day activities. And that was fantastic because we wanted a, a practical application of skill sets and we got that. So he's presently working on another project and he's doing very well. The students, when they come, they have um, the areas that they love, the areas that they are comfortable with. Right. Um, I would say 90% of what we do, we teach, and 10% is what they give back. Mm. But there is a slight change as we go further into the, 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 the um, the time that they hear because mm -hmm. it's less about teaching and more about them providing um, and more about um, them um, showing what they can do and thus far you know he's, he's been absolutely fantastic he's been a very good ambassador for his um, for his country and for his for his college now I'm sure your time in St. Kitts and Nevis here at the ECCB hasn't been all work you know, tell us about some of the fun things you've you've been engaged in since you've been here. I've been involved in a lot of fun things here at St. Kitts and the ACCB. Um, I went some sightseeing since I've been here. I've um, I've actually went on a tour to visit um, some of the some of the landmarks here at St. Kitts, and also had a chance to interact with a few um, few of the locals who were very warm and welcoming um, at the bank. I had the opportunity to um, attend a few conferences here and expand my knowledge, not only in IT, but in central banking as well. I um, had the opportunity to also take part in um, um, the bank's banquet, the various Christmas celebrations, and also um, I had the opportunity to take part in the various sporting activities here at the ECCB, such as the Unity Walk. and the cricket and um, dizzy bat and so on and I must say it was an enjoyable experience for me. So you've been busy but you've been having a lot of fun. Uh, yes, I have. Excellent. Lyndon, what's next for you after going through the six months at the ECCB? What, where do you go next? I plan on furthering, um, further improving my work ethics and professionalism within the work environment and also just try to become a well-rounded driven individual of course, um, I view education as an important tool in one's um, professional development, and I also seek to further my education in, um, in the IT field in the near future. Lyndon, what would you say to other prospective Bright Spark 
ask applicants? What would you tell them about the program? Um, individuals who wish to um, who is chosen for this um, for this program, I would say to them, treat it as if this is a continuation of your of your school life or your education or even your personal development. You know, um, um, this um, institution is a learning. Um, institution and you will learn something new every day whether it be professional, technical or even life skills. And um, and of course don't be afraid to share um, to share your ideas and to be open to new ideas as well. But most importantly, um, just um, enjoy the process and have fun with it. you think you have what it takes to be an ECCB Bright Spark? The opportunity is now open to you. We are currently looking for uh, Bright Sparks to participate in our FinTech development. As you know, we are now in the, in the process of testing a digital ex, uh, currency. And so we want some young persons, and we are scouting now for some young persons to come on board to be part of the FinTech uh, project as we play in the sandbox, so to speak, that they are there with our developers and our staff. So this is pushing the envelope a bit for our, our students. What we would like to do, and we want to use this opportunity to encourage to see if we can get some uh, ladies as well. So we've had two gentlemen, and it'll be very, very, Good if we could get a lady or two to be part of the, the development of the fintech project so we can get a balance uh, and so we know while we are very appreciative of the fact that young men have uh, raised their hand and come on board because we know we have some uh, problems with young men in particular social problems but we would like to see some young ladies as well come on board uh, to be part of the process so the appeal is for young ladies to think about, you know, the opportunity to be here with us. Uh, we will welcome you. We will put you through the same environment and you will be mentored. And so we want to continue the development of the Bright Spark program. We are looking for three uh, Bright Sparks. So it will be even brighter uh, as we develop the FinTech program. We are from the Davis Six Farm College and you are watching ECC. To view any episode of ECCB Connects anytime, any place, at your convenience, check us out on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn at ECCB Connects. This brings us to the end of this episode of ECCB Connects. Thanks for watching and join us next week when we'll discuss how the ECCB is working to improve the ease of doing business in its member countries.